Hey everyone. So, <clears throat> mixed and entire radicals is on docket for today. Um, this is another one of my most favorite things to teach in grade 10. Um, this with factoring trinomials, which we've already dealt with. Um, but this is brand new to you, okay? And so <clears throat> this lesson is going to end up being a little bit long because I really want to take some time to develop um, an understanding of what we're talking about, okay? I don't want you just to look at a question and do it for the sake of doing it. I want you to understand why you're doing what you're doing. If you understand the why, your ability to communicate math becomes much better, it becomes much more fluent, okay? Um, so stay with me, it'll be a good ride, and uh, we'll have lots of fun. Okay, so first of all, a quick review. Um, let us try and remember our exponent laws and see if we can uh, simplify this. So we want to multiply the tops together, but before we can multiply the tops together, I need you to see this outside exponent, okay? That outside exponent applies to everything that's in front of it, which would be that bracket of 3x cubed y5. So the 2 is going to apply to the 3, that means it's 3 squared. And the 2 is going to apply to that 3, so that's an x to the 3 to the 2. So I will multiply those powers together, um, those exponents together, and then 5, or y to the 5 to the 2, I will multiply those exponents together. Okay, so when I do that, that leaves me with, didn't do anything with these guys, but then that leaves me with 9x to the 6, y to the 10. Again, just a reminder, I think I've said this in previous lessons, but be really careful that you realize this is three squared. It's not three times two, okay? You're multiplying the exponents, but that three is not an exponent, it's a base, okay? Okay, so now I'm gonna do the multiplication. So I've got 16 times nine divided by eight. Well, in my own head, I'm just gonna go like this and say, hey, 16 divided by eight is two, and two times nine is 18. So I'm gonna end up with an 18 x to the 6 divided by x to the 6 is a 1, so I'll just be left with x to the 6. y squared times y to the 10 would be y to the 12, and then I'm dividing by y to the 12, so that would also be 1. Um, so I'm left with 18 x to the 6, if I did all that in my head right. Okay, awesome. All right, now, Radicals. In previous lessons, we started to look at the concept of a radical. I've introduced terminology to you where we've talked about the radical sign and we've talked about the little cute number in the corner being the root index and then the big number or the whatever's underneath the radical sign being called a radicand. Radicals allow us to deal with numbers in exact value and that's an incredibly important concept, okay? Exact value means there's no rounding error. Um, you know, when you did the Pythagorean theorem in grade eight, when you learned the Pythagorean theorem, the last step was always to take the square root. So say you got, you got a um, answer um, that said like C squared equals eight, and then you would take the square root and you would get the root of eight, which would be, um, I'm gonna tell you exactly here. Um, promise, couldn't find the button, 2.8284. 2.8284 blah 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 okay my problem is with this blah 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 no matter where you stop this number it's not root eight okay because at some point you have to stop and when you have to stop it's not exactly whatever the root of eight is anymore because the root of eight is an irrational number that just goes on forever and ever and ever Okay, so far better to write it as c equals root 8 instead of saying c equals 2.82 blah 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 blah. Okay, this, there's absolutely no rounding error in it. And that's important because when we do math, if we use a rounded value in the next step, it throws everything else off slightly. And then every time we use another step, the answer just gets thrown more and more and more off. Okay, so grab your calculator. I still can't find mine. Oh, there it is. I found mine. I was using a different, I have like three calculators on my desk. You can't see my desk. Um, but I was using one that I don't normally use on that last question because I couldn't find the one that I normally use. Uh, okay. First world problems. I'm okay. Uh, let's go with evaluate the root of 16 times 9 in your calculator. Okay. So we're going to just uh, type 
the root of 16 times 9, so make sure all of that's underneath the root, and you should get the root of 144, which is 12. Okay, now the next question is evaluate what the root of 16 is times the root of 9. Well, the root of 16 is 4, and the root of 9 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. What did you notice? It's the same answer. Okay, I'm going somewhere, I promise. You just got to stay with me for a minute. Okay, uh, evaluate the cubed root of 8 times 27 in your calculator. Now, a reminder for cube root, if you are a Casio kid, you'll find that on shift open bracket. If you're a TI kid, it's math option uh, 4, I think. So, yeah, go ahead and do that. 8 times 27 is 216, and the cube root of 216 is 6. Now we're going to evaluate the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 27. The cube root of 8 is 2, and the cube root of 27 is 3, and that's like super exciting. Are you excited? I'm excited. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. What do you notice? They're the same. Okay, so what are we trying to talk about? What we're trying to talk about is when you have two numbers being multiplied in here, you could separate them out and multiply them as separate roots and you still get the same answer. And that's actually going to become uh, a super important point. And you'll see why that's a super important point in a second, but this is algebraically what we just discussed, okay? This is called the multiplication property of radicals. The nth root of a times b equals the nth root of a times the nth root of b. So again, we're just saying when we're multiplying underneath the radical, um, I can separate that into two different radicals um, and then multiply the separate radicals together. Now, what's important here is it's super important that n remains the same all the way through, okay? So you can't say that this is a cube root and then say this is a square root and this is a cube root or something like that. It always has to be the same number. Okay, and down below there, you'll get you'll be starting to get comfortable with um, that sort of wording. It says n has to be a member of the integer family, and a and b have to be real numbers. Okay, all right. So let me clear that ink for you. Now, <clears throat> radicals can exist in two different forms. Now, this is really kind of a similar conversation to in junior high when you talked about fractions you talked about writing fractions as improper fractions or writing fractions as mixed fractions. And you're going to see a lot of parallel in the conversation, okay? So an entire radical, like root 20, has the entire number underneath the radical sign, okay? Or the entire number as the radicand. A mixed radical, like you'll see there as, we, we would say there that's 2 root 5, um, has a number on the front. This works much like a coefficient on a variable. Okay, uh, it means there are two root fives. So you can look at it as, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to use the red marker because it's really hard to erase. Okay, um, I'm gonna switch to, you could look at that as, hey, I have a root five here and I have a root five here. I don't know what happened there, root five. And so all together I have two root fives. Okay, you could also look at it as I have two times whatever the value of root 5 is. That means the same thing, okay? Um, okay. So grab your handy dandy trusty dusty calculator and tell me what the root of 20 is. You should get 4.4721 blah, 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 blah. Now I want you to type 2 root 5 in and you should get the exact same thing, okay? So that should get you super excited to say, huh, root 20 and 2 root 5 must be the exact same thing. Okay, now if they're the exact same thing, there must be a way to convert between those two forms, between an entire radical and a mixed radical. Okay, and that's what a lot of today is going to be about, is learning how to convert between those two forms. Much like in junior high, you learned how to convert something from a mixed uh, fraction to an improper fraction, or vice versa, from an improper fraction to a mixed fraction. Okay, all right, so if they are the same number, there must be a process to transition mathematically from one form to the other, and that's what we're now going to pay attention to. This process becomes very straightforward when you think about a couple of things. The perfect square factors of a radicand, and I asked you to memorize some of those for me. The relationship between perfect squares and their square roots, and this new thing we just talked about, which is the multiplication property of radicals. Now, before we get into the process, I want to still just hang on with something that you are familiar with, just to try and get you to see, uh, before we talk about kind of the algorithmic way to do this, that 
for this example, it's going to be, I want you to prove that root 45 is the same as 3 root 5. So what I've done is I've given you two triangles that are inside each other here. Okay, so I've given you triangle ACB and triangle ADE. Okay, and we know that they're similar triangles. The reason we know they're similar triangles is look at this height. This height is 1 compared to an over, overall height of 3. So I multiplied that by 3. This base is 2 compared to an overall base of 6, so I've multiplied that by 6. So we have the same angles happening, and we have um, <clears throat> the ratios are in proportion to each other. So we know they're similar triangles. Now, we'll deal with the similarity part in a sec. First thing is, can you get me side C and B, and can you get me side D and E? You know how to do that both using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, They are both hypotenuses. This, 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 this is... Uh, of each triangle. So first one I'm going to do is solve for BC. So I'm going to go 1 squared plus 2 squared. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 2, or sorry, 2 squared is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5. So I'm looking at the root of 5. Now I don't want to put that in my calculator. I'm going to leave that as an exact value and just call it root 5. Okay, now we're going to solve for DE. I've got 3 squared plus 6 squared equals DE squared. So 3 squared is 9 and 6 squared is 36. And I add those together and I get 45. So DE, that hypotenuse length there, is the root of 45. Okay, so let's put those on my drawing. Um, but then we're going to have this similarity conversation. I see that every side of the little triangle gets multiplied by 3 to be the side of the, the corresponding side of the larger triangle, which means root 5 would have to get multiplied by 3 to become this side which means that side could be represented as 3 root 5, which means 3 root 5 has to be the same as the root of 45. Okay. Again, I haven't shown you how to do the conversion yet. We're just playing around with the notion that they are the same and using things that we've already done before to show that they're the same. Okay, now we're going to start talking about the process. So if I wanted to convert 4 root 5 to an entire radical, that means everything needs to be underneath the root sign. I want to take the number on the outside and convert it to a radical. So essentially, <clears throat> I'm going to think about this for a sec. I'm going to say, hey, I want to change this so that it looks like this. So I've got the root of something and the root of 5. This is a 4. That still has to be 4. So I'm thinking to myself, the root of what would give me 4? Well, the root of 16 gives me 4. So saying 4 and saying root 16 is saying the same thing. Okay. If it's saying the same thing, then I can interchange them. I, anytime I see 4, I could write root 16. Anytime I see root 16, I could write 4. Okay, because they mean the same thing. So I'm going to change that 4 to be root 16. Well, now I have a radicand times a radicand, and we just talked about the multiplication property. If I have two radicands being multiplied together, or radicals being multiplied together, I just multiply the radicands together. So that'll be root 80. So 4 root 5 has to be the exact same thing as root 80. Okay, now if you want to check that, Go ahead. You can put in your calculator for root 5 and hit enter and just look at that random decimal. And then you can put in your calculator root 80 uh, and you'll see the exact same random decimal. Okay, now remember, don't ever answer the decimal. You can just use your calculator to make sure you actually did it right. Okay. You will always have to show your work on these things. Um, so you'll always have to show me that you're changing the outside number to a radical and then that you're multiplying them together. Okay, be very careful about that. Uh, okay, so 3 root 7, again, I want to take that 3 then, and I want to change it to a root. So I'm asking myself, the root of what would give me 3? And I know the root of 9 gives me 3, so I change my 3 to root 9, because they're the same thing, right? 3 and root 9 are the exact same thing. Now I have two radicals being multiplied together, so I can just multiply the 9 and 7 together and call it root 63. Okay, and we've already talked about the fact that we can check this on our calculator. Okay, so here we go. Pause me and you try them. Welcome back. Um, okay, so 2 root 3 would be root 4 
times root 3 because the root of 4 is 2, and then that'd be root 12. Over here, I'm going to change my 5 to be root 25, then I can multiply them together, and that would be root 50. And over here, I would change my 4 to be root 16, and then 16 times 3 would give me a final answer of root 48. Okay. Next three, give me a pause for a sec. So uh, uh, 10 as a root would be root 100. So I'm looking at root 100 times root 6, which is root 600. This guy here, uh, you can't bring the negative inside. You can only deal with the 2. So I'm going to change the 2 to be root 4, but the negative stays on the outside. Okay, don't bring the negative inside. Um, so then that'd be 4 times 7. So I'd be looking at negative root 28. And now this guy, the process stays the same, but the game changed very slightly because instead of looking for squares and square roots, now I'm looking for cubes and cube roots. So essentially I have to ask myself, the cubed root of what would give me four? Now, if that statement sounds confusing, think of it like this. Four is the same thing as the cube root of four cubed. Okay, because the cubed root of something cubed would just end up back to four. So when I was looking for the square root of something, I squared it, so I could put it underneath the radical. When I'm looking for the cubed root of something, I cube it, so I can put the cube, the perfect cube underneath the radical, so that when I cube it, I get to the number I wanted in the first place. Okay, all right, so the cubed root of 64 is four, and then I've got 64 times three. So my final answer is the cube root of 192. Now I have to tell you, because I am extremely picky about your communication, you cannot drop these cute little threes. If you don't have those threes, you are not getting full value for the question because the square root of 192 is not the same number as the cube root of 192. So you gotta be super, super careful with that, okay? Okay, so now, Let's play a little deeper. I've got a fourth root now. Well, I need to figure out what the fourth root, I know, let me say it this way. The fourth root of three to the four would be three. Do you follow me? So I gotta figure out what three to the four is. Okay, three to the four is 81. So I'm looking at 81 times five, and that would give me the fourth root of 405. Don't drop the four. Don't drop those root indexes, indices, sorry. I never said I had good grammar. Uh, okay, so then we can play the game with the fifth root. So the fifth root of 2 to the 5 would be 2. So I figure out what 2 to the 5 is. That's 32. So I know that the fifth root of 32 would be 2. So I change my 2 to the fifth root of 32, and now I can multiply the radicands together. So I get the fifth root of 128. Again, you could always check this in your calculator. You go 2, fifth root, 4, see what that decimal is, and go the fifth root of 128 and make sure it's the same decimal. Okay, but I need to see your work, so I always need to see this middle step and then your final answer. Okay, all right, without a calculator, arrange the following from least to greatest. Well, I can't really judge who's bigger between 4 root 5, 3 root 11, and 6 root 2, because they're all in slightly different forms. If I was to convert all of these to entire radicals, then I can see very clearly who's bigger. Okay, so let's do that. Um, 4 is root 16, so that's 16 times 5, which is root 80. 3 would be root 9, so that's 9 times 11, which is 99. And 6 would be root 36. 36 times 2 is 72. So now, very clearly, I can see it's going to have to go 6 root 2 first, then 4 root 5, then 3 root 11. Okay? Awesome. Okay, next up... <clears throat> We're going to try and go the other way, which is entire to mixed now, okay? So, I'm going to go back to root 20. Using the multiplication property of radicals, can we break root 20 into different factors? Well, think about what times what would give me 20. Well, I could do root 1 times root 20, because 1 times 20 is 20. I could do root 2 times root 10, because 2 times 10 is 20. I could do root 4 times root 5, because 4 times 5 is 20, and that's actually all I could do. Those are all the factors of 20, okay? Now, you're not going to have to list all the factors of 20. I'm just showing you, here are three different ways I could break 20 apart using the multiplication um, property, okay? Now, when I look at these three ways, two of them are utterly useless. Two of them don't get me anywhere, so I would never have actually written them. I just want you to see some things, okay? First of all, 
this guy is utterly useless because the root of one is one. So it just brings me right back to there and I haven't really simplified anything. This guy is also utterly useless because I don't know what the root of 2 is. It's some random decimal. And I don't know what the root of 10 is. It's some random decimal. So that doesn't really make things more simple for me. It actually probably makes things more complicated. Okay. But the root 4 root 5, he's kind of friendly because I know that the root of 4 is, yeah, that's where you all yelled. 2. So instead of writing root 4, I can now write that as 2. And look at that. You just took your entire radical and you switched it or you converted it to a mixed radical. Okay. So that's the next thing we're going to practice. Now, what we're doing here is we're finding perfect square factors of the radicand. Okay. So what I want you to get into the habit of doing is you're gonna to want to write all your perfect square factors out. When I give you a test or a quiz or whatever, the very first thing you should do is go, okay, one times one is one, but that one's kind of useless. So we're gonna start with four and go to nine, 16, 25, and 36. I'm just in my head going two times two, three times three, four times four, right? And I asked you to get those memorized anyway. So I know you have them all memorized. Uh, then 49, and uh, where was I? 864, 81, 100, 121, and so on. Okay. Um, so you're going to find a factor of the radicand off of this list. Okay. Then you can break it into the, the number times the number. And then you know what the root of the perfect square is. And so that's how you simplify it. And then you keep going until the number of your radicand is as small as you possibly can make it. Okay, so root 99. Well, I need a factor of 99 off of this list, and I can see that it's 9. Okay, you don't, you don't start these by going divide by 1, divide by 2, divide by 3, okay, because those are all useless. You only want to be dividing by 4, dividing by 9, divided by 16. You want to find a perfect square factor um, of the radicand. Okay, so 99 can break down into root 9 times root 11. And then you ask yourself, okay, well, what do I know? I know that the root of 9 is 3, so it's 3 times 11. Now, you got to go as far as you possibly can. So now I'm looking at this 11 and saying, is there another factor off this list of 11? And the answer to that is no. When the answer to that is no, then it means I'm done. I have a, I've simplified this as much as possible. Okay. Okay, root 27. Again, I got to go to this list. Again, I see it's 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to break this down into root 9 times root 3. Uh, sorry, my PowerPoint did not advance. There we go. Root 9 times root 3. And then I know the root of 9 is 3. So that becomes 3 root 3. Root 50. Okay, the 9 doesn't work this time. But the 25 sure does. Uh, root 50. See the 25 right there? Okay, I'm only working off of this list. Um, so root 50 can be uh, root 25 times root 2, and then I know that the root of 25 is 5. So my simplified version is <clears throat> 5 root 2. Again, the, the phrasing here will always say completely simplify. Okay, the first question that we were doing was converting to an entire radical. And if I want you to do that, it will physically say convert the following to an entire radical. If the question says simplify, it's always this that you're doing, okay? It's always trying to make the radicand as small as possible. Okay, so root 48, root 18, root 28. Um, I would love it if you pause me for a sec. Okay, root 48, <clears throat> 16 times 3. So I bro broke that down. You may have not seen the 16 right away. You may have worked with the 4, perhaps. That's fine. It's just that you'll do it in two steps instead of doing it in one step, but you'll still arrive at the right answer. Um, so that's four root three. Okay, let me just stay there for one sec to show you what I mean by that. Let's say you picked the four and you said, oh, I want to break that down into root four times root 12 instead. Okay, totally fine. Root four is two, so now you got two root 12. And this is lovely. You've done nothing wrong. You're just not done because you're always asking yourself, okay, is there another factor in here? Four can now be, or sorry, 12 can now be four times three. So now you break it down into root four and root three, and then this 
4 becomes a 2, and then you still end up with 4 root 3, because you end up with a 2 times 2 on the outside. Okay, so no matter how you look at it, you're going to have 4 root 3 as your final answer. Uh, root 18 would be 9 times 2, and then the 9 becomes a 3, root 9 is 3. And then root 28 would be 4 times 7, so root 4 times root 7, the root of 4 is 2. Okay? Okay, pause me and try these guys. For 72, you could have started this several different ways. Um, I went with 36 times 2, so root 36 times root 2, and then <clears throat> the root of 36 is 6. You could have started with a 9. Um, you could have started with a 4. Uh, both of those would have worked fine. 240, I ended up with root 16 times root 15, and then the root of 16 is 4. And again, you're always asking yourself, can I go any further? No, because there is no perfect square factor inside 15. Okay, the cubed root of 72. Now you got to pay very close attention to this conversation. Nothing's changed yet, everything's changed. The process that we're doing has not changed. But the list that you're using now needs to be a list of um, perfect cubes instead of perfect squares. So you go through some of your perfect cubes, you've got eight, um, then you got 27, then you got 64, then you got 125. 216 for good measure. Okay, so cube root of 72, I need a perfect cube factor, so something off this list that will work nice with 72, and that would be 8. 8 times 9 is 72, so I break this down into the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 9. Please, 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 please don't forget your cube, uh, don't forget that little 3 as a root index. So, so important, okay? Uh, and then the cube root of 8 is 2, so my final answer would be 2 cubed root 9. Try these three. So for cubed root of 40, I'm again looking at 8 times 5. So it's cubed root of 8 times cubed root of 5. Cubed root of 8 is 2. Final answer, 2 cubed root 5. For the cubed root of 24, I'm again looking at 8. Um, cube root of 8 times cube root of 3, and then the cube root of 8 is 2, so my final answer is 2 cube root 3. Twin, uh, sorry, for 54, I'm looking at 27. 27 times 2 is 54. I was thinking about the answer in my head. Um, so I have cube root of negative 27 times the cube root of 2. I can actually take the cube root of negative 27. Um, it's okay when it's an odd root index. Uh, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. So my final answer is negative 3 cubed root 2. Okay, now I switch the game again to a fourth root. So the process stays the same, but I'm looking for essentially perfect fourths. So you throw a couple. You don't need a whole lot of those, but you throw a couple there. 2 to the 4 would be 16. 3 to the 4 would be 81. Uh, 4 to the 4 would be 256. And that's probably going to be way more than enough. Um, so now you go... 324 divided by 16, 324 divided by 81, see what's friendly. We find out that it's 81 times 4, so I break my fourth root into the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of 4. And then I know that the fourth root of 81 was 3, so my final answer would be 3, fourth root of 4. Okay, then I head over to the fourth root of 48. Uh, the 16 is going to work for that. So I got fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 3 because I know. 16 times 3 is 48, but then I also know that the fourth root of 16 is 2, and so my final answer is 2 fourth root of 3. Now, be careful with this last guy. Um, lots of us get tunnel vision and we see, oh, there's already a 2 out there. They must want me to bring the 2 in. No, 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 no. Remember, this says simplify, okay? Uh, if you're simplifying, you are trying to make this as small as possible, the radicand as small as possible. So I'm still, the two is just kind of along for the ride. I'm focusing on the 12 and I'm saying, is there a perfect square factor? We're back to perfect squares. Okay, is there a perfect square factor of 12 that I can get out of here? And I know it's four times three. So I change this to be two times the root of four times the root of three. The root of four is two. And so I end up with two times two times root three, which will end up being four root three. Okay, <clears throat> all 
All right, let's try a couple of those then. Again, we're still simplifying. So the number in the front is just along for the ride at the moment. If you are asked to simplify, this number has to become as small as possible. This number has to become as small as possible. So I'm looking at the root of 48. I know that's 16 times three. <clears throat> I forgot to put my mouse back on, sorry. That's 16 times three. And then the root of 16 is four. So I end up with three times four, which is 12. Final answer, 12 root three. And then likewise, over on the two root 75, I know I can break my 75 into 25 times three. The root of 25 is five, and then it has to get multiplied by the original two that was out there. So I end up with 10 root three, okay? So this is uh, very new to you. You want to do as much practice as you can with this, okay? So simplify this dude. Um, <clears throat> Again, the name, the game changed here only because I'm looking at this list now instead of this list, I'm looking at my perfect cubes. The two that's in the front is still just along for the ride. He'll get multiplied by whatever else comes out. So um, I'm looking for a perfect square factor, sorry, a perfect cube factor of 81 off this list. That's 27. 27 times three is 81. And if you don't know that, you're just using your calculator and trying, right? You're going 81 divided by 8, 81 divided by 27, 81 divided by 64 until something works for you. Um, <clears throat> I know the cube root of 27 is 3, so I have 2 times 3 on the outside, which is 6. So final answer will be 6 cube root 3. Okay? Okay, so... This is brand new, as I've said, okay? I, I don't want you to rush yourself on this. I want you to give yourself lots of time to practice, okay? Um, the next note in this series um, is really just a review of what we've done. We're not gonna go further. We're gonna spend a couple lessons on this now so that you have some time to get really, really comfortable with it, okay? Um, if you have questions, please, please connect with me. Um, and until then, I'll see you at the next lesson. Take care.